Have you ever thought that when holding a deck of cards, you are, in fact, holding a history book? Every card in a deck of cards is a result of a long journey that involved efforts of thousands of people around the world. These 54 pieces of paper can tell us a lot about our history and can reveal stories of cultural and economic changes, social upheavals and industrial revolutions. My name is Alex Romanov, I am a magician and an art historian. In this video I will tell you the fascinating history of playing cards in just 5 minutes. This episode is produced in partnership with The Vanishing Inc. Take a deck and enjoy! There is evidence that playing cards already existed in the 12th century in China. Playing cards were brought to Europe in the 14th century from the Middle East. We know that because early European decks resemble the Mamluk deck, which was produced in Egypt at the time when a powerful military caste known as the Mamluks rose to power. It is interesting that the Mamluk deck already consisted of 52 cards, divided into four suits. Court cards in the Mamluk deck had abstract designs or calligraphy. Probably it was not allowed to depict persons on cards due to religious rules. The Europeans decided to add images and court cards started to depict the European royalty. For a long time this card was known as knave and represented an infantry soldier or a page. Problems began when cards started to be printed with edge indices because the abbreviation KN for knave could be easily confused with K for king. Famous American card maker Samuel Hart found the easiest solution. He renamed the card. In 1864 he printed a deck with jacks instead of knaves. He took the word jack from an old English game All Fours, where it was used for the knave of trumps. In early decks there often were no queens. For example, in the 14th and 15th centuries, decks had two officers of different ranks and a king. You can still see it in some national European decks. It was in France where queens took their place in the deck. And it was the French deck which became what we now know as the standard deck. King was the highest card from the very beginning. In France, each king was said to be a representation of a particular historical figure. Biblical King David for spades, Alexander the Great for clubs, Charlemagne for hearts and Julius Caesar for diamonds. Historically, ace had a low value and in many European decks there was no ace but simply number one. Already in the Middle Ages, ace was a special card in some card games. This trend became especially popular in the 18th century during the French Revolution, when people didn't really like royalty that much and didn't want king to be the highest card, so a lot of card games began to be played with ace being the highest card. In the 18th century, British government required card printers to put a stamp on the ace of spades as a sign that a special tax had been paid. This is why the Ace of Spades stands out from all the other cards, has special design and the manufacturer's name on it. Americans added Joker as a trump card for the game of Euchre during the Civil War. The word Joker probably comes from the German word Eukerspiel, which is the German spelling for Euchre. Contrary to popular belief, Joker has nothing to do with the tarot card Fool. It is more like an upgraded version of the Jack. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. The earliest European suits, which we know as Latin suits, were coins, clubs, cups and swords. Swiss Germans introduced their own suits around 1450. These were roses, bells, acorns and shields. The Germans then replaced roses with hearts and shields with leaves. Early decks had no red and black suits. It was the French who introduced this color separation and also created the symbols which we use today tiles, clubbers, carts, and bikes. 
For centuries, court cards were drawn in full length. In the 18th century in France, reversible court cards appeared. It was very practical, as you didn't have to turn your picture cards right way up when playing. But I guess that magicians could be disappointed with that. In the late 19th century, edge indices became common. Packs with edge indices enabled players to hold their cards close together in a fan with one hand. As you can see, what we now know as a standard deck of cards is not that standard. Every detail is a result of a long historical process. Card industry has also changed dramatically in the last decade, with increasing number of independent card designers, growing demand from magicians and cardists, and development of such platforms as Kickstarter. Do you know some more facts on the history of playing cards? Write them in the comments. On this channel I talk about the history of magic and magic props and the role that magicians played in culture and arts. So if you are a magician or just interested in the history of culture, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss the next episode. My name is Alex Romanov. This was Art of Impossible in association with The Vanishing Inc. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.